Hello, this is Andrew Rewald, and I'm reading On the Movement of Plants. Native food and medicine plants like sea fig were donated by Yerubingan Aboriginal Rooftop Farm for a public planning event to launch my Biennale project called Alchemy Garden in September 2019. The garden is a space in which both native and non-native ethnobotanicals are considered for their cultural and ecological role in context with human migrations and the climate crisis. Along with the Darlinghurst community group, the Darlow Darlings, who maintain it as a community garden, other Biennale artists were invited to participate on site at the National Art School. I connected with Joseph Williams and Fabian Brown from the Tennant Creek Brio, who shared stories about plants they recognised from Warramungu country. On their return to Tennant Creek, Joseph and Jimmy Frank from the Brio consulted other community members about these plants and wrote the piece Bush Medicine, which follows this piece in the publication. Portulaca oleracea is Latin for purslane, or, or pigweed as we know it in English. It's called Portulac in German, with microspecies found globally. One microspecies in Australia is Carlampi jutu jutu in the Warramungi language. Portulaca is the highest known plant source of omega-3 fatty acids and is rich in potassium, calcium and magnesium. The origins of this cosmopolitan synanthropic species are lost in deep time, pointing to links with ancient human migrations and practices of seed carrying and trade. Its leaf, stem, root and seed are still used today in many cultures as food and medicine because the mucilaginous juices soothe digestion, aided by its anti-inflammatory and analgesic qualities, and can be used as a salve for skin irritations or sunburn. The tiny seed, if you can collect them, are tasty when toasted, then ground with salt as food seasoning. Old man salt bush leaves make good seasoning too. Just dry the leaves and grind to a powder for a healthy table salt alternative. I forage for portulaca every summer, ever since an elderly friend taught me to make horta, a traditional rural Mediterranean dish of seasonal foraged greens like portulaca, amaranth, dandelion, fat hen, mallow and plantago, all boiled together until tender. Horta is then served with olive oil, a squeeze of fresh lemon, salt and pepper. The leftover bittersweet juices are prized by elderly people as a restorative broth. In 2010, when living in Melbourne, I curiously approached two elderly Chinese Australian women collecting purslane and other wild greens by the Maribyrnong River, and this was my introduction to foraging. I described this encounter to a Greek Australian friend who said her aunties also forage for wild greens, grown from seed of treasured food and medicine plants scattered on arrival in Melbourne parks and wild spaces when they migrated from Greece. This was a common practice since inner suburban houses where migrants often settled had small or no gardens to cultivate crops. A Germanic ancestor of mine was documented carrying seed of 60 edible species when migrating to southeast Queensland in the mid-19th century. At this time, poor farmers of the Prussian diaspora were put at the front line of colonial invasion to clear fell bush for access to farmland. Ironically, these nascent Germanic communities followed traditional ways of subsistence farming, but this practice was penalised by the colonial government wanting specific monoculture crops to supply the British Empire. Sambucus canadensis is the Latin name for American elder, which is native to North America. Sambucus negris is the Latin name for black elder, called Holunda in German, and is native to temperate Europe, Asia, and North Africa. The American elder grows wild in the northern rivers of New South Wales, where I live in Australia. In spring 2019, I foraged buckets of flower heads from urban spaces and bushland, to make syrup from the nectar and to ferment it as soda and beer for events at the National Art School. The European black elder, Holunda, has much more nectar and flavour. And in Germany, I harvested Holunda flower and berries from Berlin's vacant spaces and parks throughout the spring and summer of 2018 for an ethnobotanical project there. In Northern Europe, the berries have been used in traditional folk medicine to treat ailments for thousands of years. This fruit is a good source of anthocyanins, a type of flavonoid with antioxidant effects, calcium, iron, and it contains vitamins A and C and B6, with sterols and essential oils, 
tannins and viburnic acid. The medicinal value comes from the berry's antioxidant content, being one of the highest known in fruit, which the human body extracts from plant matter to use against harmful free radicals. You must boil the berries before consumption to neutralize the poisonous alkaloid. Strain the pulp, dispose of the skin and seed for a deep purple elixir eaten as a chilled summer soup, as an immune system booster, or preserved as a winter tonic for cold and flu symptoms. The American elder variety growing in Alchemy Garden is no doubt a culturally important food and medicine plant in the mythology of indigenous North American peoples. Theirs are not my stories to tell, but I can share some stories about the European elder, the Holunda, pieced together from my time in Germany, learning about my ancestors and the food plant people relationships. The Holunda tree was held in high esteem by ancient Germanic tribal cultures who valued it for food, medicine and religious purposes. This cultural value points to early Christian attempts to discredit its mythological connections. The biblical Judas character is said to have hung himself from an elder tree after betraying Jesus. Thus, he was called Judas tree, or Jews ear tree, as a clear anti-Semitic reference, because the tree's soft pithy bark is favoured by the wood ear fungus, looking like human ears grown from the trunk in autumn. Why demonise a tree? For ancient Northern Europeans, it was a sacred tree, and to Buddha cut one down. Since the Norse Germanic goddess Freya and other forest spirits were thought to reside in its hollow limbs. Adding to the aura, flutes were traditionally made from its small stems because the soft inner pith produced an easily crafted hollow pipe. Early Christianity contended with the unshakable belief in deities like Freya in Norse Germanic cultures with appropriation or charges of idolatry. Traditional May Day celebrations, like dancing the maypole, can be interpreted as reductive of ancient worship and ritual around her power and fecundity in spring. Ancient female deities inspired the Brothers Grimm fairy tale, Mother Holder, a parable on the power and perils of womanhood in the novel Children's and Household Tales from 1812. And at its worst can be read through a patriarchal lens of domesticity and institutionalised misogyny. Frey is also the root of Frau, the title for married or widowed women in Germanic languages. Frey's story was linked to Frau Holder, protector of agriculture from which Frau Holle derives, who was a deity for snow as well as cookery and may have contributed to a superstition that Holunder only be grown on the southern side of the home lest it harbour a witch. Such a superstition, at its best, could be read as a coded instruction simply to optimise growing conditions to produce abundant fruit. 